when you think that you are not a proud person, then you actually are. Number two, the solution of pride is to grow in humility. Humility means we think and prioritize others above self. So the goal for this lesson is that for you to realize that you have pride and start to have self-awareness. Where is your hot button when it's pressed? Then you will react. Where is pride resides in your life? In which area? Then once you have that self-awareness, you can start working on it. Dear friends, welcome back to part three of Into Christ Likeness. In the previous lesson, we just completed part two where we studied about spiritual discipline. In this part three, we will talk about growing into Christ's character. And in the next six lessons, we are going to highlight a characteristic in us that are sinful, that we need to work on, that we need transformation in order to grow to become more like Jesus Christ. In this study, lesson 13, we will talk about pride. And before we begin, let us pray. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you, Father, for giving us Jesus Christ, the example of, of a God that although he is a God, but he did not consider that something that he needs to hold on to. But he uh, gave us the role modeling of how humble uh, he was when he lives on earth. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us the example uh, of humility and what does it mean to live with humility. And I just want to pray, Holy Spirit, that you will open our eyes, uh, whoever that will uh, watch and listen to this message that holy spirit that you will open uh, our eyes to see pride in us and to repent and to grow into becoming more humble to be like jesus christ in jesus name i pray amen so friends what is the definition of pride right um to um before we begin talking about about pride, let me give you the definition of pride. What is pride? A feeling that you respect yourself and deserve to be respected by other people. A feeling that you are more important or better than other people. That is the definition of pride, that we respect ourselves so much and we think that we need to be respected, that we need to be treated in certain way because we think so highly of ourselves. Have you ever wondered, friends, what does God think about pride? Does He like pride? Does He hate pride? What does the Bible say about pride from God's perspective? Let me read it from Proverbs 6, verse 16 to 19. And to make it easier for you, so I did not uh, copy-paste this in the slide in the form of paragraph like uh, from scripture, but I put it into numbers so that it is clearer. These are the, the list of seven things that God hates. It is like a God hate list, right? God hates it when we do this, the seven thing. So there are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Number one, healthy eyes or pride. Number two, a lying tongue. Number three, hands that shed in no innocent blood. Number four, a heart that devises wicked schemes. Number five, feet that are quick to rush into evil. Number six, a false witness who pours out lies. Number seven, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. So I was surprised when I first read this list that we all think, right, that... Um, Murder or adultery must be the number one that God hates. And apparently not. Murder and adultery is not like the big sin number one. What is the number one that God hates? Pride. Right? Pride. That God hates pride number one so much. And pride is like the source of other sins that we will 
we will commit sin because of pride, and God hates it so much. And what are the symptoms of pride? Have you ever think about it, right? Um, let me give you a list of uh, just. This is not an exhaustive list, right? This is just uh, something that just uh, will help you and I to recognize pride in us. Number one, easily offended, right? That we, when we are prideful, that we are so easily offended. How dare you say that? Oh, I'm hurt when when he said this, 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 this. Once he says this, 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 this. Or the second one, when we feel and think that. I deserve to be treated this way. How dare them not treated me the way I am supposed to be treated? For example, I'll give the example later. Let me finish this list. I am right. You are wrong, and I am not going to apologize first. I can rely on myself. I don't need God. I have the strength to do this. Why should I submit to anyone? Who are they? I will do whatever I want. I don't want to submit. So, right, easily offended is part a symptom of pride, uh, right? That if people around us are tiptoeing, uh, they 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 are so afraid to offend us. That means actually we are a very prideful person. But but because pride is so blinding, right? Everyone can see it very clearly except us. It is very blinding. The more that we think that we are not prideful, the more actually we are a very proud person. So that's how deceiving that is. And I deserve to be treated this way, that way. Imagine and remember back when you are in vacation, you go into a hotel, for example. That you, your mindset is that I want to relax. I want to be treated like king, like queen. And when the cleaning service or the um, servant, the the people that serve you breakfast or serve you dinner did not treat you the way you want them to be, you get angry. How dare them? This is a five star hotel. How come they give me a two two star service? Then you complain and because you think that. You deserve to be treated in a certain way. I am right. You are wrong. This in 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 any relationship when there's conflict, right? Our natural tendency is that I am right. You are wrong. I am not supposed to apologize first. In a relationship with our spouse, in a relationship with our children, that we don't want to admit that we are wrong. It is so difficult to admit that we are wrong. Let alone to come first and apologize, and to humble ourselves and to say, "Actually, I I was wrong. Would you please forgive me?" Right? On, when we are so prideful, we will reject that idea. No way! I am going to apologize to my child. It is not going to happen. But we should, right? Even as a parent, when we are wrong, we should apologize and ask for forgiveness. And I can rely on myself. You know, I'm very smart. I, I am strong. I can do this myself. I earn this wealth by my own sweat and blood. Nobody helped me. But do you know that everything that we have belongs to God? Even your ability to breathe right now, even your ability to move your finger, to walk, to think, to re- solve as a. Uh, A problem. It is all given by God. It is God's grace that we taken for granted. It is pride that we discounted God. We rely on ourselves. Do you know that is sin? God hates it when we rely on ourselves because we kind of like discredit Him. What He has done. What His grace has given to us. Why should I submit to anyone? Right. Very rebellious attitude, and it's very. Um, who are you? Who do you think you are? That I need to submit to you. I need to listen to you. I know what is best for me. It's prideful also. So people who br- who likes to break the law, the rebellious people, is actually a lot of pride inside. So pride is very blinding. The more we have pride in our hearts, the more we are we don't realize that, and that is very scary. Friends, do you know what I fear the most in my life? 
What I fear the most is my own wicked heart, deceiving heart. Because when there is pride, I, I wouldn't know it. And this is the area, pride is the area where I sin the most. This is the area where, where I struggle the most. All my life, my biggest battle is in this area, pride. And in the previous lesson about um, quiet time, I told you about my journaling every morning. The reason that I journal every morning, remembering what happened yesterday, and I write down conversation, what, what did I say to people, what did I say to myself, how did I think, how did I uh, talk to myself, it is because I want to check myself, I want to screen myself from pride. Because pride is very blinding, pride is very deceiving. I wouldn't know it unless God show it to me. That in prayer, that I would ask the Lord to show me my pride, my sin on a daily basis. You know, when God revealed to us the area of pride, when our eyes suddenly open and can see that sin of pride, it is God's grace. It is a miracle. Miracle is not only like healing, physical healing, your, your limb, and then suddenly you can walk, you're blind, and suddenly you can see. It is also spiritual blindness that I have. In God's grace, He opened my eyes from time to time to be able to see my sin of pride. And what do we need to do when God already extended that grace, opening our eyes to see our pride? Repent, right? The, the solution for sin is to repent. We need to repent from pride. We need to grow into humility, to grow to become more like Jesus in our humility. And that takes the work of the Holy Spirit and also God's people in our life. And also, we probably this because of pride, right? Human tendency is to compare ourselves with others, right? Uh, have you not compared yourself with others? I'm sure uh, you have this also tendency that you compare yourself with others. And then what will happen when we start the comparison game? This is a very, very dangerous game, but it is a disease that we cannot running from because of our brokenness, because of our wicked heart. That tendency stays with us that we always compare ourselves with others. And the result is always either we feel that we are more above other people, right? Or we feel that, oh, I am below from other people, that I am in I feel inferior. And I started to feel um, self-pity. Either we boast, oh, I am more than other people. Look at me. Hmm. I, it's like boasting, right? And the other part is self-pity. Let me read the quote from uh, the book, Into Christ Likeness. And I took this quote from John Piper. Self-pity is the response of pride to suffering. Boasting says, I deserve admirations because I have achieved so much. Self-pity says, I deserve admiration because I have sacrificed so much. Boasting is the voice of pride in the heart of the strong. Self-pity is the voice of pride in the heart of the weak. The reason self-pity doesn't look like pride is that it appears to be needy, but the need arises from a wounded ego. And the desire of the self-pity is not really for others to see them as helpless, but heroes. The need self-pity feels doesn't come from a sense of unworthiness, but from a sense of unrecognized worthiness. It is the response of unapplauded pride. So self-pity is also a form of pride, right? That you feel self-pity, you feel that your, your, your ego is hurt. Why? Because people do not recognize your worthiness, that you are overlooked. Um, then you feel hurt. It is also a form of pride. Think about it. Read this um, quote again and then meditate upon it. Is that true? That 
uh, people who have the tendency of self pity is actually uh, it's brewing pride inside. So, what is the difference between self pity and humility? Right? It might look the same. Self pity is not kind of like boasting. Oh, look at me! I am so great. It's not like that, right? But self pity is is low, needy. Oh no! It's like oh, I'm not worthy. What is the difference with humility? The difference is self pity. The focus is still self, right? I am hurt because I am not being recognized. My worthiness is being overlooked, so the focus is still self. But humility, when we are humble, the focus change from self to other people. That we are willing to think and to prior prioritize other people's needs before self. That is humility. That is what Christ、uh, have done. That He put others' needs before Himself. So think about that—the difference between humility and self-pity. Which one are you? Are you truly being humble, or are you actually um, just um, wallowing in self-pity? So, what is the solution to pride? Humility. Repent first. Repent, and then we need to pray, and we need to grow in the ca- character of Christ, which is humility. Let me read it from First Peter five,、uh, five to six. Apostle Peter says, "All of you clothe yourself with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that He may lift you up in due time." So God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Why do we want to go against God? Why do we want to be on the opposing side of God? When we are pri- prideful, God hates it. But we, when we are willing to be humble, God will lift lift us up. But the thing is, right? Probably you you are thinking, hmm, do I have pride? Do I re- do I have pride? Am I a proud person? Right? Probably you're thinking that. Let me let me tell you. The answer is yes. Yes, all of us because of sin in our life, we are all very prideful people. But the question that you need to ask yourself is, where is that pride hidden? Where is it that hidden that I couldn't see it? I cannot see it. Lord, open my eyes to be able to see. Pride, so that I can repent, so that I can work on this area. Are you a person that is easily offended? Are you? When was the last time you get hurt by someone? Maybe think about that. Why did you get hurt? Most likely, it is because our our pride are being hurt. And also in Philippians two, verse three, Apostle Paul says, "Do nothing from rival." Rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. What is the sign of humility? Humility is when we put others' needs before ourselves. When someone says something that is hurtful to us, right? Naturally. So if we want to grow into、uh, humility, what should we do? Overlook, right? Overlook, and then think about people's comment, criticisms, and.、Um, What people said that we don't like about ourselves. Probably, my guess is that there's a lot of truth in it, 90% truth. But it is just、uh, we are too prideful to be able to see that the truth, the reality of what people said about us, right? But when we have the grace from God to realize that, and not only realizing, we need to take action, right? We need to come back to the person who tell us who cre- who say something that we don't like. Thank you, that I couldn't see that, but you you can see it very clearly. Thank you,、um, I truly appreciate that you tell me. I will think about it and I will process that. And usually, what I do is that I will process that with myself first、um, to gain self awareness, and I would check: Is that true? 
about me that I would process that with the people who knows me well, uh, my family, my husband, my daughter, and then the third round I will process that with my community, the trusted ladies in my group. So that's why God's people is also very uh, important for us to grow into humility, right? Because they see things that we could we cannot see, and then. Um, if they love us enough, they will tell us, right? And when we process, we uh, hear a lot of truth from different, different people. And then once I know that, oh yeah, that's right. I'm very pr- proudful. That is a sin that I need to repent. This is the area where I need to work on. And then the next time it happened again, then I will put a mental uh, note that next time when it happened, I need to be... Uh, responding with this, with this. So I am building a strategy on how I can grow to become more humble. To grow into Christ-likeness, it it doesn't happen automatically. We need to think, we need to work on it, we need to be intentionally planning and strategizing on how we can grow to become more like Christ in humility. So the principle that I would like to share is that uh, number one, pride is blinding. When you think that you are not a proud person, then you actually are. Number two, the solution of pride is to grow in humility. Humility means we think and prioritize others above self. So in this whole study into Christ likeness, that we want to become more like Jesus. And when we have pride and we don't know that, then we cannot grow to become more like Jesus. So the goal for this lesson is that for you to realize that you have pride and start to have self-awareness. Where is your hot button when it's pressed? Then you will react. Where is pride resides in your life? In which area? Then once you have that self-awareness, you can start working on it. Application. Number one, ask yourself this, how and where do you realize pride in yourself? Number two, how does this lesson help you? What is your action plan? If you are courageous, (laughs) you can ask the closest people in your life, your spouse, your children, or your close friends who knows you for a long time, for a long time and knows you very well. They probably know and probably they maybe they already uh, told you but you never really listen and if you ask them again um, then probably uh, you can gain more self-awareness more uh, insights into where pride resides in yourself so that you can repent and work on it and let us pray father in heaven um, we are coming before you wanting to repent of our sin of pride and you hate pride so much and we want to grow in our humility father holy spirit please help us to be transformed to become more like jesus christ father in heaven we pray that we will not be deceived by pride that we will not ruin by pride but you in your grace will open our eyes and will help us lord to decrease our pride and to increase our humility to become more like jesus christ in jesus name we pray amen so friends i hope this lesson about pride uh, is useful and beneficial in your character transformation to become more like jesus christ and i hope to see you in the next lesson